let's talk about digital non-fungibles. Or first of all, let's talk about what fungibility is. So this is typically a trait that's desirable in things like currencies in the old way or things that are commodities. So something is exchangeable against something else, which is not necessarily obviously true if you have something that's of digital nature. If I send you a file, you can easily copy it and send it to someone else. So that's in the heart of what this crypto collectible topic is all about. So this particular company just raised $1 million in pre-sales for their in-game items. Um, why? Because these are unique virtual items that you can obtain and give to someone else without you retaining a copy. And it's provable that you don't. That's the peer-to-peer -peer transfer. And Roger, who's going to speak up, and I'm standing in front of him, who's going to speak next, as with Engine, and Engine has one of the first three digital wallets that actually support this. And I think you all downloaded it by now, right? Because it's, it's a raffle attached to that. And so the first new blockchain standard this, which came out was the ERC721, which enabled CryptoKitties. And what then resulted in a lot of mainstream attention to this particular standard was obviously specifically price stickers like that when a crypto kitty was sold for $140,000 uh, to a gentleman called Igor Baronin, Bar Baronin? what he said. Um, and most people in the room probably know our hedge fund guy. He had bid up to, I want to say, $100,000. $15,000 and then dropped out, but he still thinks that this particular um, crypto collectible might be worth millions in a couple of years. So I don't really understand why you stop bidding. Um, I think what's way more interesting is things like true item ownership. So NFTs allow you to take your in-game item and then transfer it in the case of engine from one game to the next. And even if you stop playing the game, you can still retain the item without ever needing to maintain your particular account to that particular game. Every one of these tokens has a unique address on the, in this particular case, Ethereum public blockchain. And because of that, it's part of a large ecosystem. This number is probably no longer correct. There's probably more than 25 million wallets out there right now. But the particulars about standards, in particular to the uh, Ethereum standard, is that once the mainnet of Ethereum complies with this standard, anything else that supports the previous standards will always support your particular item, let's say. So any wallet, any exchange that's being built to transfer those items. So this is what makes it interesting and valuable. That's why you're working on standards, and that's why we'll be talking about the extension of these standards a little later on as well. Um, everybody probably knows this young gentleman who was very sad to learn that um, Blizzard removed a certain function from a game that he was playing for some time, and he's also a big, big fan of the 721 standards, part of the reason why it got forked into the mainnet pretty quick. Most people don't realize it, that when CryptoKitty started selling kitties, um, this particular standard was actually not part of mainnet yet, not even when uh, the CryptoKitty's underlying company raised $12 million. It was still not part of mainnet, but it had already gotten that much widespread adoption <coughs> that it was a foregone conclusion it would become a standard on mainnet. So how about in-game item sales? What makes it interesting? If you're not in the gaming community, and I think there's about 20% of people here from the gaming community, mostly John, I guess. He makes up 10. Um, so in-game item sales now make up the bulk of the revenue in the space. Um, Popular games such as Fortnite, I learned, in some months make $350 million from in-game item sales. And those are in-game items thus far that if this game should go away, whatever item you owned in that game is also lost. Um, so free-to-play free games with in-game item revenue is expected to be $20.5 20 billion in 2018 and much more by 2020. I actually expect this to be more like 
closer to $100 billion. I think John can speak to that. And with half of the revenue coming from mobile in the future. So this is one of the paradigms, and I claim that I came up with this particular slogan, heroes born every hour. Um, as you, most of you in the room probably know, a crypto kitty is born every 15 minutes, and then they stop being born on Friday. So you can, using the same principle, if you're a game designer, or if you're a collector for that matter, can create interesting game dynamics to where you have a hero born every hour, you have a dragon born every hour, every day, every month, you get different themes over different times. So that makes this particular game um, that has this particular character much more interesting to an average user, presumably, than a game, again, that has its hero being tethered to a DVD or tethered to a server that may or may not be there next year when you want to use it. So what's multiverse gaming? Multiverse gaming is, I think, a concept that Engine pioneered. So it allows you to transfer one virtual item to a new virtual world using, using this particular same standard that Roger's going to talk about. And it will also allow game developers then to provide tools to create absolutely unique in-game items through functions such as melting <laughs> items down and minting new items based on the meltdown of these in-game items. So this is kind of a simple example. As a game developer, you could Im imagine, hey, you got armor slots, you got belt slots, you got weapon slots and, and other features. And for all of those, if you want to be unique, you can allow your game designers to develop individual items that are limited in scope or that are unique in scope and hence will be more attractive for players to, to buy and trade. And speaking about the trading part, so there's three wallets as far as I can tell in the market right now. Coinbase has a separate wallet that they somewhat without fanfare launched a couple of weeks ago that supports 721s, so supports CryptoKitties, where you can trade your CryptoKitties peer-to-peer. -peer. Unfortunately, you still have to pay a gas fee, which is somewhat annoying at this point in time. Um, Engine Wallet, you all downloaded that, and then uh, Opera as well. You also already have a bunch of NFT trading websites, and historically, there have always been trading websites for in-game items, although it's, I think, mostly frowned upon. Yeah, but, yeah so. Okay, cool. we'll talk about it later. So, so Wax raised a lot of money last year to um, extend what Opskin is doing. This is OpenSea where you can trade those, and then lastly, RareBits as well. And then one thing that we've seen just now, again, um, successfully being conducted are initial collectible offerings, and that's something that's particularly interesting to what we do for a number of reasons, but we can talk about it on an individual basis. I don't want to push it at this point in time. Um, but what's interesting about it, so you can presumably fund your game before you ever create a playable version, i.e. you create all your character sets, you create a bunch of unique characters, and you can test the market on whether or not people would be interested in participating in that game simply by pushing those out and offering them for sale in a unique fashion where I can I download them to my wallet, pay a particular price for them so that the game publisher A gets his game funded and then B also can tell whether or not this is an attractive proposition for a particular audience. Anybody knows this rose? Okay, this is kind of a side note, but art also now has a blockchain manifestation and it now doesn't come with a particular frame anymore because this particular rose was sold for a million dollars. It's a 721 blockchain rose by an artist from New York. And so this is really the reason why we think this is an interesting topic. So if you're starting out with a blockchain and you're creating a unique entry, so you're creating a 721 entry, then you can do interesting things in the real world. So what we're going to demo later is you can put an NFC tag on a wine bottle that's representing this particular blockchain entry, okay? That's a starting point. It's born on the blockchain, so to speak. But then, more interestingly, I can now transfer this without necessarily having to transfer that wine bottle. There's wine um, 
custodians that will take that wine from you, for you, hold it for you, store it at a certain temperature and certain lighting conditions. And at a time of your choosing, you can transfer that token without needing to transfer the bottle. You can see how this can be very useful if you're just into trading this particular wine because now you don't actually have to send it and the particular buyer might not even uh, have bought it to consume it immediately, but he's just a collector of that wine who is totally fine with this bottle sitting at a trusted custodian. Um, this is a symbol for IOTA, if people don't know it. And IOTA is specifically designed to do IoT tracking. So you can envision handing over this particular NFT from the Ethereum blockchain over to IOTA, where IOTA then immutably tracks how this particular real-world item is being handled. Is this wine bottle stored at the right temperature? Is it being exposed to any conditions that the buyer should be knowing about? And then at the end of the day, that's something that we're working on right now. Um, you might want to transfer this, this is a stellar icon if people don't know, to a point of sale system to where then this point of sale system will hand off ownership of this particular item using, let's say, an EOS application DAP on your phone to where you then see this particular item, the individual item, on your DAP, on your phone, with its complete history that I just pointed out. So I think just using this one example, you can see how this is useful for a buyer and everybody else involved in this particular supply chain. So we'll talk about that more. and. Um, Jonathan will later do a demo and two people will win three buck chuck. So this is a term, uh, I first came here to um, invest into gaming companies so I had to relearn this particular term so for those people that are not gamers in the room in real life, it's a term apparently used by gamers all the time, IRL. And so in short, item born on the blockchain attached to a bottle, eventually be shown in your app on your phone. And we're going to demo this later, and I'll let Roger talk about the specifics of game technology and multiverse items. <laughs> 